Hey everybody, it's Luke from Galaxy Tech Review, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite Android phone. Is it still a budget king in 2019? Well, we're going to dig into it and find out. You can pick this particular phone up in three different colors in two different configurations, either uh, 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of ROM, or 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of ROM, the latter of which is about $155 on banggood.com. Shout out to Banggood for sending this over for me to review. You'll have their link in the description below. So let's dig into the Mi A2 Lite and see if it's still worth your purchase in 2019. So let's do a quick unboxing of the Mi A2 Lite. Again, you can see on the cover there, they've got three different colors, gold, a kind of a blue and a black version. Uh, the global version is just like the Redmi 6 uh, Pro. So if you're familiar with that in other markets, this is gonna be about the same uh, as far as the specs go. Uh, the phone itself uh, looks nice. It's got a metal backing to it. Uh, it's got an LCD panel that is 5.84 inches full HD plus display. Uh, you've got metal buttons on uh, the sides there. Uh, you do have a nice feel in your hand with the rounded edges here. 12 megapixel uh, and 5 megapixel rear camera with a 5 megapixel front facing camera. You have a fingerprint reader, which we'll talk about a little bit later along with the cameras. Uh, and you also have a face ID if you want to use that as well. Also, the, uh, coming in the box, they include a case with it. Uh, again, you can pick this up at Banggood for uh, $157, I believe, is the exact price at the time of the review. And that is for the 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of ROM model. There's also a 3 gigabyte of RAM and 32, but I suggest just buying the 4 and 64 for the snappiness of the device. It does come with a micro USB cable and a power uh, connector here. They gave me a European version, but they also gave me an adapter uh, so I can plug it in if I need to. So that's pretty much it for the box. There's a SIM removal tool here, which we'll get into in just a second as I come back. All right, let's take a look at the screen itself as we power on the device. Uh, again, you've got a 5.84 inch full HD plus display on here. It is LCD. Uh, you have a notification light at the bottom of the screen, which is an interesting place to put it. And there is a notch at the top of the screen. Uh, but I'll show you a little bit later that you don't notice the notch while you're watching videos. Uh, we'll get this powered on. RAM by Android One. This is going to be uh, Android certified. Uh, so you're going to get the stock Android experience on this phone, and you're also going to get a lot of updates uh, very quickly. Uh, this has Android Pie or Android 9 on it already. I did the update to it. Uh, it came with 8.1 out of the box, but it updated right to Android 9. So that works out really, really well. Now, another thing to note about this phone is uh, it is dual sim. Uh, it does uh, have an IR blaster built into the top of it as well as uh, just a stereo speaker at the bottom. There's no uh, speaker at the top, uh, but we do have uh, that uh, 5.84 inch LCD uh, screen there that's 2280 by 1080. You do have your uh, microphone there, our 3.5 inch microphone, and of course that IR blaster, so you can control TVs and use it as a remote control. So that's actually pretty cool that they still include something like that. On the back, of course, we have that uh, nice uh, dual camera array here. For Even for a budget phone, you're gonna have a, that 12 megapixel dual camera with a five megapixel and then a five megapixel front facing camera uh, right on the back with that fingerprint reader. Okay, so let's take a look at the SIM card uh, tray here and we're just gonna pop this out. And this has a dual SIM card and an expansion for a micro SD card slot. So you've got that expandable memory, plus you can run two different SIM cards in here at the same time. Great for international travelers or business users. So let's talk about uh, build quality and internals. Of course, you've got the Snapdragon 625 uh, CPU in this, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, uh, micro SD card uh, slot, 
for expansion. A metal back to this, which uh, makes it feel a lot more durable. Uh, you also have an IR blaster at the top that I mentioned before, micro USB for charging dual SIM and an LCD screen that is F, uh, D, uh, FHD plus at 5.84 inches. You do have that notch at the top there. Uh, it doesn't really get in the way when you're watching videos uh, or playing games, and I'll show you that a little bit later in the review. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera array on the back, 12 megapixel and five megapixel dual camera array. Uh, now, the good thing about this is it does take a very nice uh, photos for the price point in good light. Now it suffers in low light and I'm gonna show you a few different uh, pictures here. Uh, not of the low light, uh, just because it really does suffer and I'm just gonna tell you that right off the bat. Uh, this is not a great camera for low light photography, but if you have good light, these come out pretty well. As you can see here, I've got uh, my little figure of Dr. Strange here, and I'm going to use this as my subject for taking pictures. And you have, it, it's HDR enabled if you want to enable HDR, and the photos are taken pretty quickly, uh, as you can see. Uh, you've got portrait, and uh, you can set up portrait photos if you want to. You just have to be far enough away from the subject uh, to utilize the portrait photos, uh, but they do work. Uh, and again, this is a $155 phone, uh, it's got a lot of good uh, effects to it that you can add to your photos as well. And I'll show you a uh, sample of the front-facing and rear-facing cameras on this. Uh, but overall, you can see uh, once we go in here that the detail is very, very good on this. Uh, and the colors are represented uh, quite well also. Okay, so as you can see, this is a still picture of taken with the rear camera uh, in portrait. And you can see the background is blurred. It does a very good job overall. Now the front camera, this is, this is just a picture of me real quick, is a little bit washed out. It's good for selfies and video calling, uh, but not much else. So don't expect miracles out of the selfie camera. Last thing to mention about the camera is the video recording. It only records in 1080p. It will not record in 4K. And that has to do with the limitations of the Snapdragon 625. So just to let you know that, if you don't need 4K recording, it does 1080p, uh, has uh, uh, OIS for image uh, optical image stabilization for that, and does pretty well with it. So let's talk at battery life on this phone. This has a 4,000 milliamp battery in it, easily getting me two days plus. Now, if I was to use this very lightly, I would get more like three to four days in between charges. It has adaptive battery, so you can use that or battery saver to extend it even more. Uh, it does not support wireless charging and GSM Arena it gives an endurance rating of 106 hours. Uh, even my Note 9 only gets 97 hours on their endurance rating. So you can imagine that this will last for quite some time. Let's take a look at performance. Uh, Geekbench gave it an 878 for single core and a 4,341 for a multi-core score. Now, these aren't going to break any sound barriers by any means, but as is with four gigabytes of RAM, this is a very snappy device. I did not find any slowdowns whatsoever while using this device. So this is about on par for your budget Android device. Uh, so not terrible, but not earth shattering and by any means. Now, if we move on to Antutu, we can check out Antutu benchmarks here as well. Uh, if we look at our Antutu benchmarks, which I just ran, you get a score of 78,836. Again, not earth shattering, but not terrible. Uh, able to play pretty much any game out there. Unfortunately, Fortnite is not uh, supported on this particular device, but I did play PUBG Mobile and NBA Jam and a few other ones and had no problems whatsoever running them. So can this phone game? Yes, the phone can game. Just depends on the game that you want to run. Uh, right now I've got NBA Jam up here and it does pretty well. It's not a horrible experience. Uh, load times were fine. Uh, responsiveness was good. The LCD screen looks excellent. Again, the color representation in gaming as well uh, works very well here. Uh, so I didn't have any problems with games. That's not a problem uh, for this device. It will definitely game. You will eat up battery, but thanks to that 4,000 milliamp battery that's inside, uh, you can get some pretty serious gaming sessions in on this phone and not have any problems. 
Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Wi-Fi speed on this. Uh, I do want to comment that I did test this on T-Mobile here in the United States. It had no problems hooking up to 4G LTE since it's the global version of the phone. It does support uh, mobile bands that are going to be used here in the United States. Now, taking a look at the speed test here under our My Verizon wireless or Wi-Fi, uh, it does pretty good. This is on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, not the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, and it does a little, obviously a little bit better on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but I wanted to show you the lower end uh, so you knew what to expect if you just had 2.4 gigahertz set up. And we're looking at about 20.7 uh, download and uh, close to the same on upload. Now that's on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, no problems whatsoever on the uploads or download speeds of this phone connected to Wi-Fi. And again, T-Mobile worked great uh, for call quality uh, here in the United States. Now the fingerprint reader is located on the back and works, as you can see, very quickly. So I was pretty surprised about that. It's very responsive, no problems whatsoever. Even if I was to kind of miss it a little bit, it picked up my fingerprint and unlocked very quickly. Uh, you also have the option to do a face unlock on this, uh, but I find fingerprint just to be a, a little bit faster, uh, especially on this device. And I'm used to using my fingerprint for everything anyway. So that's the route that I would choose. Okay, so let's talk about Android One. Android One gives you access to the cleanest UI you're going to get. It's going to give you stock Android. As you can see here, uh, everything is nice and clean and very stock. It also gives you access to the most updated updates. It came with Android 8.1, and when I updated it, it uh, straight out of the box to Android 9. So I'm at the most updated Android right now, and it also has the June security patches well. So if you want that stock experience, the Android One platform is the way to go. So my final thoughts on the uh, Mi A2 Lite, you can pick it up at banggood.com for $157.99 at the time of this review, which makes this a very, very tempting deal for a mid-range Android smartphone even in 2019, this phone seems to hold up. What it does is it does a lot of things very well and not very many things poorly. Uh, it's got a great battery life with that 4,000 milliamp battery. It's got a fingerprint reader, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of ROM with expandable storage, up to two SIM cards can be used. It's got a great colorful screen that has uh, very accurate colors to it. Uh, even though it is LCD and not AMOLED, it still does a very good job in that department. Now the camera is good in regular light. The only downfall that I find is that the low light photos are a little bit lacking. But beyond that, this phone doesn't really have too many downsides whatsoever, especially if you look at this price point of $157.99. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. If you have any questions or comments about the Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite global version, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Remember to like, and if you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so because that always helps me out. And I'll check you guys out on the next video.